Had ever wondered how the tiny silicon chips in your electronic devices are made? These minute marvels are the heartbeat of our digital age, powering everything from your smartphone to the servers that form the backbone of the internet. The story of these chips begins with a single crystal of silicon, grown meticulously using a method called the Jan Czakralski process. Named after the Polish scientist who developed it in the early 20th century, this method revolutionized the manufacture of high-quality single crystals. It's a process that demands precision, patience, and a deep understanding of the physical world. And the result? The creation of semiconductor devices like integrated circuits and solar cells, the building blocks of our modern technology. So, if you're intrigued by the enigma of these silicon chips and the method that brings them to life, we invite you to join us. Dive with us into the fascinating process of the Jan Czakralski method. The Jan Czakralski method, named after the Polish scientist who developed it, revolutionized the semiconductor industry. Now, imagine it's the early 20th century. The world is on the brink of technological advancement, and at the heart of this transformation is a man named Jan Czakralski. A gifted scientist, Czakralski's work in Poland laid the groundwork for the semiconductor industry as we know it today. Born in 1885, Czakralski was a man of many talents. He was a metallurgist, a chemist, but above all, a pioneer. His most significant contribution was the development of a technique to produce high-quality single crystals, a method that would later bear his name. The story goes that Czokralski, while working in a lab one day, accidentally dipped his pen into molten tin rather than his inkwell. As he pulled his pen out, he noticed that a thin thread of metal had solidified and was hanging from the nib. This seemingly mundane incident sparked an idea, an idea that would change the world. Czakralski realized that he could grow single crystals by carefully controlling the conditions under which they formed. His method involved dipping a seed crystal into a molten metal and slowly withdrawing it, allowing a larger crystal to grow from the seed. This technique was groundbreaking. It revolutionized the production of single crystals, particularly silicon crystals, which are fundamental in the semiconductor and electronics industries. The importance of this method cannot be overstated. It paved the way for the development of semiconductor devices like integrated circuits and solar cells. Without it, the landscape of modern technology would look vastly different. We owe much of our technological advancement to Czakralski's method, from the smartphones we use every day to the solar panels that power our homes. In essence, Jan Czakralski's simple yet ingenious method transformed a complex scientific problem into a manageable process. It marked a turning point in the history of technology, forging a path for future innovations. Now, let us delve into the intricate process of the Jan Czakralski method. The process begins with the melting of high-purity polycrystalline silicon in a quartz crucible. This is the first crucial step in the Czakralski method and the one we'll be focusing on in this segment. At the heart of it all is polycrystalline silicon, an essential raw material in the production of single crystal silicon. This silicon is carefully selected for its high purity, as any impurities can significantly impact the quality of the final crystal. We're talking about silicon that's so pure, it's over 99.9999% silicon. Now, this high purity polycrystalline silicon doesn't just melt on its own, it needs a little help. And by a little, we mean a lot of heat. The silicon is placed inside a quartz crucible, a vessel capable of withstanding incredibly high temperatures. We then crank up the heat to over 1,400 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than the surface of Venus, the hottest planet in our solar system. But we're not done yet. The melting process isn't just about heat, it's also about creating the right environment. We need an atmosphere that won't interfere with our silicon melt. Enter argon, a noble gas that's as unreactive as they come. The melting process takes place in an argon-filled chamber, ensuring that our melt remains uncontaminated. This inert atmosphere is crucial as it prevents any unwanted reactions between the silicon and air. Remember, we're dealing with temperatures hotter than a volcano here, so the last thing we want is our silicon reacting with oxygen or nitrogen in the air. 
After a period of intense heating, our high-purity polycrystalline silicon transforms into a molten state. This is our silicon melt, a pool of liquid silicon that's ready to be turned into a single crystal. It's a fascinating process, one that's as much about precision and control as it is about high temperatures and chemical purity. With our silicon melt prepared, we move on to the next step. The journey of the silicon crystal is just beginning. From this molten state, it will undergo a transformation that's nothing short of remarkable. But that's a story for the next segment. A small, precisely oriented single crystal seed is dipped into the molten silicon. The introduction of the seed crystal, the precise spark of life that births a silicon crystal, is a pivotal moment in the Chokrowski method. This seed crystal isn't just any crystal. It's a precisely oriented single crystal, chosen with the utmost care. The orientation of this seed is not a matter of whimsy, but a critical factor that will dictate the crystallographic orientation of the crystal that will eventually grow. One could say that the seed crystal is the blueprint for the entire crystal that emerges. Now, imagine the seed crystal being dipped into the molten silicon. It's a careful dance, a deliberate immersion into a fiery liquid that exceeds 1,400 degrees Celsius. Yet, this seed remains unfazed, ready to take on the monumental task of crystal growth. Once the seed crystal makes contact with the molten silicon, the magic begins. The seed crystal is slowly withdrawn upwards, but not in haste. This withdrawal is a controlled process, a measured ascent that allows the silicon from the melt to crystallize onto the seed. This crystallization continues the single crystalline structure of the seed, allowing the birth of a new crystal. But this isn't a one-way street. As the seed crystal is withdrawn, it's also being rotated. This rotation, like the seed's orientation and the controlled withdrawal, is a crucial factor in the growth of the crystal. It ensures that the silicon from the melt crystallizes uniformly onto the seed, maintaining the single crystalline structure while promoting a smooth, symmetrical growth. This process of crystal growth is a testament to the precision and finesse inherent in the Chokrowski method. It's a delicate balance of temperature, timing and orientation, all working in harmony to create a perfect single crystal silicon. As the crystal grows, the next challenge is controlling its diameter. Control, as we've seen, is the key to the Chokrowski method. And when it comes to the diameter of the growing crystal, it's no different. The journey of the crystal is far from over, and the road ahead is filled with more twists and turns. The diameter of the growing crystal is meticulously controlled. This phrase isn't just a statement, it's a mantra for those who practice the Chokrowski method. Let's delve into how this is achieved. Imagine a dance, a delicate ballet, between the temperature of the melt and the rate of pulling. Yes, the process of controlling the diameter of the crystal is indeed akin to a choreographed performance. It's a dance that requires precision, finesse, and an intimate understanding of the materials involved. The temperature of the melt serves as the music guiding our dance. It sets the pace. A higher temperature can cause the crystal to grow faster, but it can also lead to a larger diameter. On the other hand, lowering the temperature slows down the growth rate and reduces the diameter. Hence, the temperature must be adjusted carefully to find the perfect balance. The rate of pulling then becomes our dancer, responding to the rhythm set by the temperature. This rate determines how quickly the seed crystal is withdrawn from the melt. A faster rate can lead to a smaller diameter as less material has time to crystallize, while a slower rate can result in a larger diameter. With these two elements in harmony, we can achieve a crystal of the desired size and uniformity. But the dance doesn't end there. Once the crystal reaches the desired size, it's time for the cooling process. The cooling process is a slow waltz that must be performed carefully to avoid any internal stresses that could damage the crystal. It's like the finale of our ballet, bringing the performance to a graceful close. After the cooling, the crystal is then extracted, and voila, we have a completed ingot ready for further processing. It's a tangible result of the intricate dance between temperature and pulling rate, a testament to the beauty of precision and control. With the crystal cooled and extracted, we can now look at its applications. But that's a dance for another scene. 
For now, appreciate the delicate choreography that brings us these perfect single crystals. The crystals grown using the Chokralski method have diverse applications. This method is a cornerstone in the semiconductor industry, playing a pivotal role in the production of integrated circuits. These circuits form the backbone of modern electronics, from the smartphone in your pocket to the computer that might be on your desk. It all starts with a silicon wafer, a thin slice of silicon extracted from a single crystal grown by the Chokralski method. The purity, uniformity and crystallographic orientation offered by this method make it an ideal choice for fabricating these vital components. Another crucial application of the Chokralski method is in the field of renewable energy, specifically solar cells. High purity single crystal silicon is a preferred material for the manufacture of photovoltaic cells. This silicon offers efficient electrical properties which are necessary for converting sunlight into electricity. The Chokralski method, with its ability to produce large, high-quality single crystals, has been instrumental in the growth of the solar energy industry. Moreover, the Chokralski-grown crystals find their use in the realm of optoelectronic devices. These are devices that operate based on the interaction between light and electricity. Examples include light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, and laser diodes. The superior performance of these devices is often attributed to the high-quality single crystals produced by the Chokralski method. In summary, the impact of the Chokralski method stretches far and wide, from our everyday electronics to renewable energy solutions and advanced optoelectronic devices. The method's ability to produce high-purity single crystal silicon has made it an indispensable tool in the world of modern technology. Despite its wide applications, the Chokralski method has its advantages and limitations. The high purity and quality and the control over properties it offers are balanced by the complexity and cost of the process and the significant material waste it generates. But that's a conversation for another time. For now, let's revel in the broad reaching applications of this fascinating method. The Chokralski method offers several advantages. Let's delve into the details. One key advantage is the high purity and quality of the crystals produced. The Chokralski method makes it possible to manufacture single crystal silicon of exceptional purity. This is crucial in the world of semiconductors, where even the minutest of impurities can have significant effects on performance. The structural perfection of these crystals is another feather in the cap for the Chokralski method. Moreover, the Chokralski method allows for meticulous control over the crystal's properties. The orientation, dopant distribution and size of the crystal can be precisely manipulated. This level of control is absolutely essential when it comes to the electronic properties of the final product. The ability to dictate these parameters gives manufacturers the power to tailor the properties of the silicon crystal to specific application requirements. But every silver lining has a cloud, doesn't it? The Chokralski method is not without its limitations. The complexity and cost of the process is a significant drawback. The need for sophisticated equipment, along with the requirement for precise control over various parameters, makes the process quite complex. And with complexity comes cost. The Chokralski method is more expensive compared to other crystal growth techniques, which can be a deterrent for some. Another limitation is the material waste involved. Once the crystal is grown, it needs to be sawed into wafers for use in semiconductors. This sawing process results in significant material loss, which is not only economically costly, but also environmentally unfriendly. The quest for perfection does come with a price, doesn't it? Understanding these aspects, the advantages and the limitations, helps us appreciate the intricate process of silicon chip production, it's a delicate dance of science and engineering where precision, control and quality are paramount. But so is the recognition of the costs and compromises involved. The Jan Chokralski method, though complex, is integral to the world of electronics. This method, developed by the brilliant Polish scientist Jan Chokralski, has truly revolutionized the world of technology and it's worth taking a moment to appreciate its profound influence. In our journey today, we've delved into the fascinating process of the Chokralski method. 
From the preparation of the melt, requiring high purity polycrystalline silicon heated to scorching temperatures in an inert atmosphere, to the introduction of the seed crystal, setting the stage for the crystallographic orientation of the final product. We've explored the intricate dance of crystal growth, with the seed crystal slowly withdrawn and rotated, ensuring the continued single crystalline structure. We've discussed the meticulous control of the crystal's diameter, a fundamental step in ensuring uniformity and quality. Finally, we touched on the cooling and extraction of the crystal, a process that requires careful management to prevent internal stresses. And these crystals, these products of intricate processes and exacting control, are not just beautiful objects, they are the heart of our modern world. Their applications range from integrated circuits, the foundation of our electronic devices, to solar cells, a key component in the drive towards renewable energy. They even find use in optoelectronic devices, which operate on the fascinating intersection of light and electricity. Of course, like any method, the Chokralsky process has its advantages and limitations. It produces crystals of high purity and quality, with precise control over properties that are critical for their electronic applications. But it comes with complexity, cost and material waste. Yet despite these challenges, it remains the cornerstone of silicon crystal production. In summary, the Jan Chokralsky method is a marvel of human ingenuity and scientific understanding. It's a process that, despite its complexity and the challenges it presents, continues to shape the world of technology and beyond. So next time you use an electronic device, remember the intricate process that made it possible.